السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له 
له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا اللهم ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وأصلي وأسلم على مبعوث رحمة العالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وعنا معهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Respect to brothers and sisters in Iman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today's khutbah as I did in the first khutbah, will be about how did we receive the Qur'an? How did we receive the Qur'an? How did the Qur'an reach us? We have the Qur'an now. The reason why I'm, as Muslims, basically, we have no problem. This question does not make a trouble for Muslims. But we know that the social media now has changed the nature of humanity, maybe... 90 or 180 degrees. Now your kids, your daughters, your sons, most of their time watching something on the social media. Now social media is completely open. Hundreds if not thousands of sites are attacking Islam and Muslims with lies, of course. Okay, fabricating, lying, attacking, bringing true things out of context throwing them in the faces of very quick, nice, beautiful, with some nice music on TikTok. Your son maybe will sit four hours on TikTok on daily basis. Just, you know, you see, just, you know, every 60 seconds. Whoosh, Muhammad has done such and such. Who told you that Quran is genuine? How to do this with the Quran? Did Uthman burn some Mus'hafs 1400 years ago? The answer, yes, he did burn, yes. Okay, so you have a lot of fabricated copies of the Quran. So how did your father and your mother told you they are, you know, brainwashing you, you poor Muslim. How do you know that Quran is true? Did you, is it authentic that Uthman burned Masahif? Yes, it is, I tell you, yes, he did burn some Masahif. Who knows the context? No one. <laughs> Who studied these things? No one. They pick something out of context. They throw it, they say, if you want to know that you are saying the truth, you just go to such and such book, Sahih Bukhari, whatever. You go, yes, you will read it, yes. Oh, oh my God, okay, what was said before that? No one cares. <laughs> what is the context? No one asks. Uh, this is one of the poisoning, you know, platforms, social media against you know, your kids, your do sometimes your wives and your daughters. Some people, some criminals from Arabs and Muslims, okay, who work 24-7 against Quran. Who told you hijab is uh, correct? Who told you? Who told you? No, 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 no. They try to twist, you know, the meaning of the verses. Wallahi, I know tens of Arab ladies in their late 30s and 40s, I'm not talking about young, 16, 15, just, you know, still the, the shahwa and desire. No, 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 no. She's about to be a grandmother. She left the hijab because of the influence of some videos from those criminals. 
You know, it's like all the time, who told you, look this, out of context, the Quran means, the hadith means, this is not in Bukhari, this is something. Most of the people, they don't know how to search. They don't know how to reach. They don't know the basis of the knowledge, which is understandable. We can't ask everyone to be expert in Islamic studies. By the way, Islamic knowledge genuinely is much more difficult than studying medicine and engineering. If you want to be a scholar, I'm not talking to be a Muslim, I'm talking a scholar, specialist in Islamic knowledge. The context of uloom al-Quran, the sciences of the Quran, it's a huge ocean of knowledge. Most of our kids, they have nothing. Regardless of the reason, however, they are attacked, okay, on the social media. One of the things that they are attacked, that how, how did this mushaf reach us? How can you know, okay, because they use a similarity with Jews and Christians. Jews and Christians, they depend on manuscripts. They don't have the concept of tawatur. They don't memorize orally. No Jew, to the best of my knowledge, and I'm an expert in comparative religions. My PhD is in comparative religions. To the best of my knowledge, and I'm in this field since nearly quarter century. <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, I don't know that there is a one rabbi or one priest on earth who memorizes by heart his Bible from cover to cover. <laughs> and I am ready to challenge. <laughs> In Islam, we have something that Allah, Allah gifted Muslims with. It's not because we are so clever. No, 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 no. We are not clever. <laughs> we are just humble human beings. So to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah decided by saying, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. Now this is nahnu the majestic we. Noon al -azama. It's us who reveal the Quran and it's us who will preserve it. Inna lahu lahafidun. Okay. What was the way that Allah did the hifz, the preservation, the protection to memorize this? texts this Quran from any kind of corruption like what happened with others. So I'm telling you, now the, the problem, others, they have manuscripts and they don't depend on oral transmission. They don't know it, Aslan. It does not exist in their vocabulary. So our kids, when they compare, okay, where are our manuscripts? Do we have, ma no, we don't. <laughs> Is it the basic? Okay, go to square number one to understand how did we receive the Mus'haf. It's like an educational session for the parents so that when your kid asks you, at least you know how to put your finger on the right place to know how things happen. Now, in our culture, in our religion, in our history, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received the revelation from Allah through the Archangel Gabriel, Jibreel Alayhi Salaam. Literally, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen exactly was transmitted to the Sahaba, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, not even a shukru lillahi Rabbil Alameen. Even though as Arabs we can say Alhamdu and shukru may be similar. No, 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 no. It's Alhamdu. It has a specific meaning, has nothing to do with a shukru. It's Alhamdu. Exactly with the sound, with the pronunciation, with the written form. Then Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب ولا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. It's exactly, and it was read Alif Lam Mim exactly from millions to millions to millions to millions to millions up to this. It ended by قل عوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس. How did this happen? Now our basic, the first piece of knowledge you need to know. Please let's share it and educate anyone in our families. Number one. We depend as Muslims in receiving the Quran on the tawatur, the oral transmission, not transcripts, okay? This is a unique gift for Ummah Islamiyah did not, has not, does not, will not exist for any humanity on earth. <laughs> it is unique. So you need to know it. It's like someone who came from somewhere having no knowledge about high technology, and he want to know the high technology of the space rockets. Without knowing mathematics, without having English, without coming to the West, you can't understand how they use the space rockets. You need English, you need the West. If you want to be high technological, for example, medical instruments, where will you will do it? 
Definitely not in Arab countries. You have to go to America. You have to go. This is the base. Now, medical, English, high technology. If you want to know something unique about Islam, you need to come to Muslims, not to go or to Orientalists, not to go to non-Muslims. Don't listen to the CNN about how the Quran was transmitted, or Fox News, or Orientalists, or priests. They have nothing to do in understanding what we have. We have our own unique way. Anyone who is seeking the knowledge, educate him. So we are the ummah of the unique oral transmission of our holy book. Does not exist. Okay, how come, Habibi, it does not exist, no comparable, don't compare it. It's a unique by its own. <laughs> when someone asks you, but how come the Christians, I don't care with the Christians. Their problem is different from mine. <laughs> I have oral transmission, okay? How come? Prophet Muhammad received it. Then he started to communicate with the Sahaba on daily basis. Whatever comes, Jibreel alayhi salam tells him, put this verse with that verse. This is a group of verses. After that, before that, the order of the chapters, the sewer, the verses, the titles. Al-Baqarah, it was named by Allah. Al-Imram, by Allah. It's not even according to the Sahaba. Whoever tells you a part of this is lying. Fa, he received it. They kept now memorizing. Tens, hundreds, thousands memorizing on daily basis. We are a living ummah. Salat, Fajr, Isha, and Maghrib alone three times on daily basis. Someone, Prophet Muhammad or whoever he is, the one who is leading the imamah, was reciting what has come, what came on daily basis, and all of them listening, correcting, preserving, fixing, spreading. Can you imagine? Imagine this. Maybe we don't appreciate this because we are already having this now, but we have received the gifts ready. Khalas, it's, it's cooked ready. But let's go what happened at that time. Receiving, memorizing on daily basis. Prophet Muhammad tells them, anyone did a mistake? There is tens and hundreds of them. Then. Now, just to imagine the power of this Ummah and the power of this Quran. Prophet Muhammad, before he passed away, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the ninth Hijri year, when he did the Hajj, the pilgrimage, according to the most of the narrations, those who attended the Hajj with him, they were around 120,000. Can you imagine? <laughs> if, as I said, if, if, if each one of them is related to one another Muslim, his father or mother or his daughter or his wife, you know, he did not perform the Hajj with him. So Muslims, before Muhammad Sallallahu passed away, they were around, around quarter million. <laughs> so imagine what happened at the time, Umar al-Khattab. Now, tens of thousands of them, they listened directly to Prophet Muhammad, and it was repeated hundreds and thousands of times, now, and they were witnessing and memorizing. Now, this is called tawatur, and they, you know, they transmitted later. What happened now? After that, now, in parallel, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had what we call katabatul wahi, the special writers of the revelation. I repeat, we do not depend in receiving the Quran on manuscripts. We depend on the oral transmission, which was preserved by millions. In parallel, as a very strong ummah, Prophet Muhammad used to ask a number of the Sahaba to write on the possible means at that time. That time, piece of wood, leather, stones, you know, sometimes the shoulder, for example, of the, the, the goat or the camel, they used to write on these things. So they wrote the full Quran on different means, but no one was depending on this because they already, all of them, they memorize it and they repeat it and they correct all the time with the supervision of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu After he passed away, now Abu Bakr faced what we know in our history as Hurub al-Ridda, the apostasy wars. Some Arabs, they decided to rebellious against Islam and Muslims, so they had a big fight. So till everything was settled down for Islam and Muslims against those, you know, troublemakers, now, in some battles like Ma'arakat al-Yamama, the, the Muslims, they lost 70 great from the great Sahaba in one day, in one event. Umar al-Khattab, the one who was gifted by, 
you know, vision, you know, visionary person, radiallahu anhu. Before he becomes a caliph, when he was assisting Abu Bakr, he said, Ya Abu Bakr, have you not seen if we kept on this sequence and we are losing tens and hundreds of the Sahaba, why not to have a, like a, you know, preserved copy of the Mus'haf instead of spreading it in case those thousands, they were killed, just as a precaution. Abu Bakr agreed on that. Then look what happened. He collected all different means and brought the kataba with everyone who's memorizing, and they made the first united copy, and it was called by then Mus'haf. It was on leather. At that time, Abu Bakr, that was... And it was called Mus'haf Abu Bakr. Some Orientalists, when they want to attack Muslims, they, when, when they know, look, look, look. Your ancestors, your scholars call it what? Mus'haf Abu Bakr, which means, who wrote it? Abu Bakr. Ah, so it's not Muhammad. Ya Ammi, no. <laughs> Abu Bakr did not compose the Quran. It is written and memorized. They made one unite copy on a same leather things instead of being spread in a written form. But millions, they already have memorized it. Okay? It's a, so they misuse this word against your kids in the social media. After Abu Bakr passed away about two years and a half, Umar, he was a Khalifa for about 10 years and a half. In his time, Islam was spread for hundreds and thousands of people. You know, in Persia, in what used to call part of the dominance of Roman Empire and Persian Empire. In our language now, you see, you know, Egypt, North Africa, Turkey, you know, in our language now. At that time, it was Persia and, you know, Roman Empire. So it was spread up to the China, up to the India in our language now. So spread. When Uthman came, he was more than 10 years a Khalifa. Look what happened. Now, here is the critical point, the most important point when we say Uthman burned the Masahif. What did happen? What happened, this great Islam spread for millions now. The majority of them, non-Arabs, which means they don't know Arabic language. In you, comers, like now, when you have a new revert or convert, at the very beginning, how will he will recite the Fatiha? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik. It is it's by nature, it's not his language. Now millions of newcomers, they were happy. They came from Zoroastrian, Jewish, Christian, atheist, Buddhist backgrounds with different languages, but no Arabic. So they started making mistakes when they recite the Quran, even though they hear the Quran from the Sahaba. Sahaba taught them. The Tabi'een taught them. But when he wants to repeat it for himself, he will make mistakes because it's difficult. So what happened? Imagine that I myself, for example, let's say from Persian origins in their time, I have just become a Muslim. So I learned the Fatiha. I want to recite the Fatiha. I want to memorize the Fatiha. I want to educate my kids without the Fatiha. I know, I realize mentally that it's Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. My tongue say it Alhamdulillah or Alhamdulillah. My kid wanted to write it, to memorize it. He's listening to me saying what? Alhamdu. So I'm changing practically the ha, Arabic ha, into ha or h or h. So my kid will have his own copy to memorize. Alhamdu or alhamdu. Now I heard it. It's the Arabic dad. I said it. Or waladalin. I change it either into dal or d or into za or z. <laughs> so my kid will write it for his own copy or my, or my wife or I myself when I write it, whatever. So, so the people used to have their own copies because of their own mistakes. This was spread. The Khalifa heard still the Sahaba are there. And the origin, the majority, they know the right and they recite it. But because at that time they did not have satellites, they did not have, you know, TVs and satellite channels, social medias, just pressing a button, you have a TV channel, look, this is right, correct. So he heard that some people are having their own copies of the Mus'haf with mistakes, which is true. <laughs> their own handwritten 
by their own mistakes because of their own mis mistaken pronunciation. But it's preserved for other millions and it's known. So he commanded them, anyone has his own copy, burn it. And he brought the great Sahaba who wrote the Mus'haf and they made seven or eight copies, original, authentic. They sent these copies into their, in their language, they say Al-Amsar. Al-Amsar, it's like the main city in each province or state. Like now, in Canada, we have provinces. In America, they have states. And you have federal government. So, in Islam, this was the case. For example, they have main cities. Now, in the province of Ontario, we have Toronto. Now, at that time, they used to have Hawadar al-Alam al-Islami. The main cities of the provinces or the states. Like Basra, Kufa, Baghdad, Qahira, Mecca, Medina. They sent these original copies and they announced anyone would like to have his own written copy, not the oral, the oral already millions, they know it. <laughs> and they already recite it and they make mistakes, but we know the truth because this is a new, everything is not like now, today, exactly like now. Now, now in this masjid, if we have brothers from non-Arabs or non Arabs, don't they find difficulties in some Arabic letters? It's very common, it's not something new, but we all know the original a true right thing. It's just he has to educate himself. He has to do himself to do it rightly. And that's it. No changing for the Quran. So it happened at that time. Anyone would like his own copy for him, go to the province or the state governor. Let them help you to write your authentic approved copy if you want. Otherwise, anything you wrote it by your hand, just burn it. Just as when, you, when, when your kids write, read, has Usman burned Masahif? Yes. This is the Masahif that he burned. Unauthentic, written by their own hands, has nothing to do with the true Quran. And that's it. Finished. Problem is finished. It was transmitted orally up to this. But what is the evidence for what I'm saying? The reality. I always say, is there any nation on earth can challenge with their holy book saying, bring anyone who's a Muslim. Now Muslims, they are about two billions. We are about, we, we are, you know, huge number. Nearly, we do exist everywhere on the globe. Bring now a Chinese child who's a Muslim, memorizing the Quran. Bring a Brazilian, Mexican, Arab, Saudi, African, North Africa, any Muslim child, ask them to receive, just put them, and we can see this on satellites. Okay, read. Abbas, Abbas, what do Allah and Jahu Lama, what my drink, Allah, who is Zaka, what do ha, what do ha, what lady, the Saja, Ma, what Daka, Buka, what Makala, what my No, 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 no changing. No changing. Not the order, not the pronunciation, not even one single word at all now. And I, I just said to your colleagues just a few minutes ago, you know, this specific game that when we do it, I don't know what they call it, when you have a, like a 10, 15 of your colleagues sitting in the same room, in the same spots, when you whisper something, you write something on your page, for example. Yesterday, I ate a very nice, for example, maqlouba. Or yesterday, I enjoyed a very nice visit to the Mount of Hamilton. Simple. You whisper this. You say, yesterday. Wait 10 minutes, just let him whisper to next, to next, to next. 10 minutes later, what could be the end result on spot you are sitting? It could be two months ago, I lost a flight from Dallas to Austin. How? You don't know. Everyone will translate it in his mind or something. This is a very international game. Always it's proved to be true. So, alhamdulillah, wherever you go, the Mus'haf is the same. <laughs> wherever, wherever you go, children from north, south, east, west, black, white, yellow, males, females, memorize the Qur'an. You, just, you have the same copy of the Qur'an. Who does dare that he has something like that? <laughs> no one. By the way, it's not because of us, it's because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu. So this is the academic historical explanation. If you don't want it, practically know it. And by the way, to the best of my knowledge, there is no religion on earth who happened that they have a holy book that any priest or monk or religious figure memorized the full book from the book and he can prove it by numbers, which means hundreds and thousands. As I said, 
to the best of my knowledge now, 25 years ago, I know that in Pakistan alone, 25 years ago, 12 million half of the Quran. 25, I don't know today. Today, maybe they are 25 or 30 in Pakistan alone. I don't know in Indonesia, I don't know in Malaysia. I don't, I don't know, no, no, millions of people. And one of the interesting things before I finish, the word hafidah, yahfad, Allah said hafid. Now when I say fulan yahfad al-Quran, the i'jaz, the miracle of the Arabic language, which is the language of the Quran, and the language of Jibreel, and the language of Muhammad sallallahu and the language of the people of the Jannah, by the way, and the language in which Allah addressed the malaika when he created Adam. In this language, which is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you say yahfad, you translate yahfad to memorize. Yahfad to protect. Yahfad to take care. <laughs> the same origin in Arabic contains all three words in English. I memorize, I say, ihfad, such and such, which means take care of it. Be aware. Don't let anyone touch it or harm it. Ihfad, which means memorize by heart. The same root, the same word, exactly. Which means the same root contains this meaning and that meaning. So by, by enabling millions to memorize the Quran by heart, it is protected whether they love or not. <laughs> and this is part of the hifad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فيفوز المستغفرين. إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا Respect your brothers and sisters in the final two minutes just to wrap up and to make it brief to protect ourselves and our kids it's just like a small session of very educational piece of information how to protect your deen through understanding how your book, your constitution of a humanity has reached you. We have the idea of the Qiraat. Some people they say, okay, what about the Qiraat? Different Qurans? No. Qiraat are part of the Quran. When we say Allah preserved the Quran, by default it contains the Qiraat. What are the Qiraat? Different styles of pronouncing the Quran in a very miraculous way. Like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his wisdom, he taught his prophet Muhammad sallallahu through Jibreel alayhi salam how to be flexible in the recitation, taking in care the accents and the dialects of Arabs at that time. وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى وَالضُّحَى 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 It's an accent, nothing more than that. Like in English, for example. Now, in the, when I studied in Birmingham, people of Birmingham in the UK when I did my PhD there, the people, they say, for example, in it, I have a meeting. In it. In it. Isn't it? In it. You know, every D and T is like Hamza. They don't pronounce it. But I know when he say, hey, brother, in it. He means, isn't it? Everything is it. Now, for example, Americans, when they say 88, what is the sound? 99. Where is the T? Where is it? Can, can you hear the T? 99. Where is the T? But you know that it does exist and you write it. <laughs> 88. You write it what? T. How do you pronounce it? D. 88. 1999. But we all know that it's T. Regardless how my accent is, how do I write it? It's T. Okay? Fa. The same thing in all, all languages and dialects. So in Arabic language, same word, different ways, extra meaning without contradiction. For example, from the examples, let's look. You have bas and you have bas, which is called tasheel, to make it easy on the tongue. And we use it up to now. We have in Arabic dialects, people 
the word qala yaqulu qawlan it's qaf look how many arabs they change it practically in their pronunciation some of you go look gali ugultillu we change the sound of the letter qaf into ga some others they change it to hamza which is a ultillak ali like egyptians and syrians for example jordanians they say ga some uh, the egyptians they say a but egyptians and jordanians and palestinians and syrians they know it's written qaf and they, if you want to speak fusha they say qala lahu qultu laka we all realize but we have accents allah allah make it easy for the arabs by taking in consideration some of these dialects in the quran itself by make it easy and that's it so qiraat are part of the quran as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أن يحفظنا وأن يغفر لنا وأن يرحمنا رحمة واسعة أن يعيذنا من التقصير الله برحمنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك يا كريم سبحانك يا حي يا قيوم لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم إنا عبيدك أبناء وعبيدك أبناء وإمائك نواصينا بيدك ماض فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاؤك نسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة Yes, Zakala Khair.